Hello everyone, I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, your friendly neighborhood 1980s G.I. Joe reviewer. And today I'll be taking a look at a G.I. Joe utility vehicle, the 1985 Weapon Transport. Now, unfortunately, the Weapon Transport doesn't make any comic book or cartoon appearances, which is actually very strange because I happen to know that there is a cartoon study model of the Weapon Transport for Sumbo Animation. And speaking of Sunbow Animation, a very similar type of vehicle, a Flight Deck Ordnance Tractor, is shown in the second season episode, Not a Ghost of a Chance. It's on the Flight Deck of the USS Flag. And what's very interesting about that is that that tractor is colored in army green, like this, instead of the hazard yellow, which you would normally see on an aircraft carrier. The Weapon Transport is the Zamboni of the G.I. Joe series. No, seriously, look at it. It has a really chunky body, very fat wheels that are very close together. It's extremely low to the ground. And things like the tiny trailer and the big fat bomb that it's carrying really don't help the proportionate look of this vehicle. Taking a look at it with a figure, a 33 quarter inch figure, which is contemporary to the series, you can see that this isn't a very large vehicle nor should it be. It's very hard to take this thing seriously as a military vehicle, but this is exactly what a utility tractor should look like. It has big fat wheels for traction obviously, but they're very close together to give the vehicle a simulated um, turning, very tight turning circle. And it's obviously very low to the ground in order to aid large objects like this 200 pound bomb to get onto its cradle. You don't want to have to be lifting that sort of weight any higher than it really needs to be. One very odd thing about this tractor is you wouldn't normally find it to be armed the way a G.I. Joe tractor is. Speaking of the armament, you can easily remove that and it has a grip so your action figures can hold on to this. Besides the easily removable machine gun, we also have a steering wheel, which can rotate a little bit. And one of the most easily lost pieces on weapon transport, as a matter of fact, you will most often find these without the uh, antenna on here. Now, the top of the antenna looks like this, and the bottom is just sort of cut off. There, there is no uh, key piece in here. And without a key piece, this thing just sort of it's just friction friction held in there. I know a lot of people who actually still have one of these with their weapon transport have actually wound up putting them this way with the tip downwards and it actually does lock into place quite a bit better that way. The uh, instructions actually show a completely different looking antenna to what this looks like which is part of the confusion as to how some people have wound up putting this thing in upside down. Unfortunately, I do believe that this uh, this little detail is the top, and if you do put it in what I believe is correctly, it's also extremely loose and, you know, easy to fall off and lose. The Weapon Transport also came with a tiny little trailer cradle, with tiny little rolling wheels, and a separable bomb. Now, one thing about the bomb is that uh, it has a rather large dumbbell hole, which of course corresponds to the rather large dumbbell peg on the cradle itself. And this is rather a bit larger than a lot of the other uh, missiles which use this sort of um, dumbbell hole and peg system. So while the bomb is fairly easy just to sort of cram onto uh, let's say the underside of a Sky Striker. It's rather hard to put those same Sky Striker missiles onto this large peg here. 
One of the strangest things about the uh, weapon transport is its hitch system. Now this is fairly secure even though it's not really like pegged in or anything like that. But this is a unique peg system for the weapon transport. As a matter of fact, most G.I. Joe vehicles, like this uh, bomb disposal vehicle, which was made in the same year uh, as the weapon transport, this has the G.I. Joe Universal tow hook. Now, as you can see, it's not only rather high up, which is probably why this was um, made the way it is, but you can't actually put anything like this on here. It, uh, it doesn't work. Another very odd thing about this is how many pegs this thing actually has. It has one on the front as well. So you can simulate a weapon transport actually pulling something away from a vehicle. And most curiously, the trailer itself has its own peg. So what are you supposed to put onto this thing? The only thing I can think of is that they were thinking of the consumer buying multiples of this thing and sort of making a um, sort of a daisy chain of these little um, trailers. So let's say you bought a second one. Let's discard the uh, second weapon transport tractor itself and have a second uh, trailer. You have this. Now, one of the reasons why I think this is important is because, well, the big fat bomb is not actually particularly long. So you have like missiles, like the aforementioned Sky Striker missiles, and if you only have one, well, you know, it's not long enough for you to put this thing in here, even if you wanted to. However, you put a second one on here, and all of a sudden, you do have the room. And even though the pegs are really big and they can't really hold anything other than the, um, the included bomb, because this is cradle shaped, it's fairly easy just to rest anything in here and it's still rather secure. <laughs> you can put even uh, multiple items in here and it'll just be fine. And here's the weapon transport in the environment that I think it's best suited to on the flight deck of the 1985 USS Flag aircraft carrier. Now as you can see it's right beside the fuel trailer, a small vehicle which was included with the aircraft carrier. But I think the fuel trailer and the weapon transport match each other perfectly. They look very natural on the deck of the USS Flag. I have a confession to make. The weapon transport almost made my top 10 list of worst G.I. Joe vehicles in my collection. Let's face it, it's a utility vehicle in an action-oriented line. It doesn't even count as a support vehicle, and probably shouldn't have been released as a separate toy, but included with a larger vehicle or playset. I can't see a vehicle in this role being released today. I would assume it would only have been greenlit back in 85 because the G.I. Joe series was at the peak of popularity. Still, to use a modern day toy analog, this is the Alfred Pennyworth of toys. With Batman today at the height of his popularity, we finally get an Alfred the Butler action figure. Sure, he's necessary to the Batman universe, but did any kid really want him? Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.